Does every counting number have a positive multiple whose digits are only zeros and ones? To ensure that we are all on the same page, let's go over some simple examples. If our counting number is 1, then clearly we can use a positive multiple 1 which consists of only zeros and ones. If our counting number is 2, then we can use 10, which once again only consists of zeros and ones. If we have 3, then it's a little trickier. But after some thinking, we can probably realize that 111 works because 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3, and so this number is a multiple of 3. As for 4, we can use 100. 5, we can use 10 again. We could keep going with this process, but there are two main problems. First, this process is going to get harder and harder. If the counting number is 7, then the smallest positive multiple that we need is 1001. If the counting number is 17, then what we need is 11,101. If the counting number is 23, then the smallest number that we need is 110,101. Okay, we see that it is hard, but there is an even bigger problem. No matter how far we go, we could never be sure whether every counting number has a positive multiple whose digits are only zeros and ones. So what can we do? We have to come up with a mathematical proof. First, let's use n to denote our counting number. Then, we're going to consider a sequence of positive numbers. 1, 11, 111, and then 4 ones, 5 ones, etc., all the way until a number that has n plus 1 digits, where all digits are ones. There are altogether n plus 1 numbers in this sequence, and we are going to divide each of these numbers by n and study the remainders obtained from these divisions. When 1 is divided by n, we record the remainder as all 1. When 11 is divided by n, we call the remainder R2. When 111 is divided by n, we call the remainder R3. And we keep repeating this process until we get to the last number in the sequence. When the last number is divided by n, we call the remainder R n plus 1. Now, let's think for a moment. When a number is divided by n, how many different kinds of remainders can we obtain? Say, if n were 3, then all the possible remainders are 0, 1, or 2. So there are three possible choices. If n were 5, then all the remainders that we can get are 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So there are 5 choices. If n were 10, then the remainders are 0, 1, 2, through 9. So there are 10 choices. In general, there are always n choices of remainders when divided by n. Agree? So how does that relate to our problem? Well, right now we have R1, R2, R3, all the way to Rn plus 1 as remainders after you divide by n. Because there are n plus 1 numbers, and there are only n choices of remainders when divided by n, we conclude that there are two of these remainders being the same. In other words, there exist two indices, one is called i, one is called j, such that ri is equal to rj. Now, take the number that has j1s. 
minus the number that has i ones. If you take the difference and divide it by n, then the remainder will simply be rj minus ri. Because ri and rj have the same value, so rj minus ri is simply 0. Because we have assumed that j is bigger than i, so when we take the subtraction, we just directly get rid of the last i once, and the difference will become a positive number that has only ones and zeros. This is exactly what we want, because remainder zero when divided by n means that this number is a multiple of n. And here we have completed the proof that every counting number n has a positive multiple whose digits are only zeros and ones. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that I will see you again soon.